good evening to you all very happy to be here so i'm going to talk a little bit about uh, you know take a slight detour from all the clinical discussion uh, that we are having and talk a bit about stem cells and 3d printed corneas and the research that we are doing at lvpi that i think can evolve into something disruptive in the future and then all of you can who are interested in cornea and refractive surgery can look forward to so um, you know i work in the area of ocular surface so within this area uh, also comes uh, the corneal stroma and the corneal stromal regeneration and uh, many of you may be aware that corneal stromal opacification or scarring is one of the leading causes of blindness in the country uh, very different from what it is in the west where endothelial dysfunction is the number one cause of corneal you know opacification or corneal clouding but in developing countries like india uh, corneal scarring is the number one cause and therefore we decided a long time back to do something about it find a way in which we can treat corneal scarring that does not require uh, corneal transplantation so the work that i'm going to be presenting is on behalf of the very large group of researchers and clinicians that uh, i work with i am very privileged to work with the lbpi so this includes ophthalmologists optometrists uh, it includes researchers technicians and also engineers so also like to uh, acknowledge the funding that we have generously received both from the government and from non governmental agencies uh, that supports our research because uh, you know funding is very very important for us to do the kind of work that we are doing and very grateful for that as well so coming back to the stroma this is basically what i think of the stroma you can see a very nice uh, oct section of a normal cornea and below confocal images from the anterior stroma the mid stroma and the posterior stroma so the cornea is very simple as tissue uh, because it is uh, very uncluttered it's very uncomplicated you have epithelium and then you have stroma and the stroma mostly is collagen and extracellular matrix and then you have the endothelium so when you think of regenerating the stroma or creating stromal equivalents you are basically trying to replace what is in the stroma which is essentially nothing but collagen and extracellular matrix so uh, and proteoglycans which make up the extracellular matrix so essentially you are trying to make a uh, new type of extracellular matrix that in some way mimics the composition of the collagen and proteoglycans that is there in the normal cornea so uh, you have the keratocytes which are uh, mesenchymal in origin in the corneal stroma you have the extracellular matrix which is made of collagen and proteoglycans and together this makes up the stroma which is basically these cells which are very sparse keratocytes and mesenchymal cells and the rest of the extracellular matrix so if you are thinking of replacing the corneal stroma you have to create this equivalent and that is basically what we are trying so before we went into all of this research into developing the stem cell therapy and the 3d printed corneas that i am going to talk about we have done also a lot of work on creating the animal models in which we are going to test this this includes a lot of models of corneal injury and trauma that cause different degrees of corneal opacification and scarring so that when we are testing them we can actually see what difference it is making and most of these models that we have created are rabbit models which are lit relatively large animals uh, and they cause a corneal scarring which is very similar to the human scars and we are also able to assess and measure these scars with the in vivo imaging techniques like oct and densitometry or shine flag similar to what we do uh, uh, for our patients so we have a room at uh, ccmb in hyderabad not very far from here where we have an, a room where we do our animal experiments where we have a replica of our clinic Di clinical diagnostics there with all the equipment including the slit lamp and the uh, oct and the shine flag so first i'll talk about the cells the keratocytes that we are trying to regenerate so here we are aiming to regenerate optically transparent corneal tissue to remodeling so you don't replace anything you uh, put new cells in the cornea and try to see if the corneal stroma can regenerate this is based on seminal work which was done uh, back in the day in jim funderburg's lab in pittsburgh where vishal works now and vishal is also uh, part of this work uh, doing it in his own way with his collaborator gary am uh, and uh, we started the first uh, dcgi approved clinical trials uh, in india in last year in 2022 uh, these are the first approved stem cell therapy trials in ophthalmology in india so we have two trials which are running parallelly we have completed the patient recruitment and treatment and currently patients are in follow up uh, between six to six months to uh, one year, uh, one of the trials is with unpreserved cells, and one of the trials is with alginate preserved cells. Alginate preservation helps us in keeping these cells uh, for longer, so that they can be transported to any other part of the country, 
So we can transport these cells at room temperature without requiring cold storage uh, for three to five days at uh, you know room temperatures in the Indian summer. So that is between 28 to 35 degrees uh, Celsius. So this is how we make the cells. I'll just show you a short video. As you can see, these cells are uh, from uh, the onioscleral rims, um, which are. Let me just see if we can play this. Can you play this video, please? So this is, these are, yeah, thank you. These are from the corneoscleral rims that are uh, derived from the eye bank. So uh, just like you would see, uh, you'd use them for keratoplasty. Otherwise, it's the same quality of tissue. These are chopped up, digested in the lab. And uh, this digested tissue is essentially grown out in the lab in small dishes in the incubator. And uh, the cells, which are the mesenchymal cells that are present and the human limbus. The human limbus contains both epithelial cells and the mesenchymal cells. You can then isolate them and this is how the cells come to us in the operating room and we just have to aspirate the supernatant and take the cells into a 1 ml syringe and we mix it with commercially available fibrin glue which is the cell that you normally use for pterygium surgeries etc. And that is how we apply it. Can you play this video as well? So this is the surgical technique of application of the cells. This is a patient with a corneal scar. You can see the lesion in the center. And this is are the cells which are mixed with the first component of the glue which is being applied on the bare stroma and then the second component being applied on top of it. You can notice that this surgery is being done under topical anesthesia uh, and it's a very simple procedure. You put two layers to so wait for this to gel so that it forms a mesh or a gel as soon as the two components of the fibrin interact. And once that is done and you have achieved a sufficient amount that you want to apply, so there's a specific dose that we use of the cells on the cornea. Uh, that's essentially the end of the procedure and you just wait for a few seconds for the gel to form, for it to solidify so it, you make sure that it doesn't come off. And once you're happy with that, it takes about five minutes to do. You put a bandage contact lens on top. All of these patients who underwent this procedure only received topical antibiotics post-operatively. Uh, no steroids, no anti-inflammatory drops. And you can see this is the change that we typically saw in uh, the patients over a period of time. Now remember that these are phase 0, phase 1 trials which means that we are basically trying to test the safety of the cells, not so much efficacy but what we are also pleasantly surprised with because we are using an arbitrary dose we were also pleasantly surprised with the fact that the cells were actually helping in removing the scar. So as you can see on the left there's a visible scar in the visual axis that you can't see anymore at the 6 month period and the uh, uh, Logmar vision also keeps improving with time particularly about beyond one month and this is another photograph basically showing the same this is a patient preoperatively with a post uh, a healed uh, post infection scar and you can see the six months after treatment with the mesenchymal stem cells where you can hardly see the scar and most of it it has remodeled and the tissue has become transparent so this is what we feel very soon is going to be available as therapy uh, for those who are interested in treating any kind of corneal scarring or haze, it might be particularly useful in post-refractive uh, surgery, post-cross-linking haze like we were just discussing, where you can use this along with or immediately after collagen cross-linking to uh, preserve the effect of the cross link stroma but not to result in the myofibroblastic reaction that causes the haze. What we are also doing right now is working, like I said, on the extracellular matrix, uh, trying to uh, create, uh, you know, uh, mimics biological substitutes for that. So this is work on what we call decellularized extracellular matrix. So we take different tissues, uh, we break those tissues down into powder, where we preserve only the extracellular matrix, and we try to make hydrogels out of that extracellular matrix. So they have the original component. Now you can use any source tissue and make it into this powder and there is a method in which you can mix it with different uh, components and make it into something that is semi-solid and becomes a gel and then use that gel for corneal regeneration. So uh, this is what we call a DCM based corneal hydrogel. So we have been working on this and the hydrogel itself can be applied directly on the cornea. You can use it on any kind of wound so it acts like a plug. So if you have a patient with a non-healing ulcer or you have a patient with a corneal tear with a slight separation of the stroma and a, and a gaping you can use the hydrogel as a glue to essentially plug that uh, area of the cornea. So not only will it plug the wound or the perforation, but it will also cause regeneration of that um, tissue. So this is what we have seen in animal studies and this is what we are trying to now take into clinical trials. So we already applied for the manufacturing license from the DCGI for this hydrogel and we want to use it in two models. One is the 
corneal ulcer model and the other is the keratoconus model for uh, uh, corneal wound healing with this hydrogel which we hope will get re restore a transparent cornea and also increase in volume addition. And the last part is the stroma with the cells which is basically making 3D printed tissue. Uh, you can see here this is in collaboration with our partners at uh, IIT Hyderabad. Um, you can see, you know, Vineet is also working with me on this. This is a 3D printer essentially that is printing with the hydrogel using as an ink. So just like any printer needs ink, here we are using the hydrogel as the ink to print this. And you can print uh, tissue which is of any shape and size or of any dimensions with uh, um, this printer. And then that printed tissue can be used for either transplantation or as refractive lenticules and so on and so forth. You can also potentially make contact lenses or even maybe intraocular lenses with this technology, which will be biological and not synthetic. So uh, with this technology, we made the first uh, 3D printed artificial cornea in India, which was last year around Independence Day. And uh, this is what we call it. It's called the neocornea uh, in collaboration with IIT Hyderabad. This is human tissue. It is optically clear. Can you just play the video on the right? This is uh, human tissue. It is uh, optically clear on the right. Yeah, that. And uh, it is mechanically very strong. So here you can see Vineet suturing through the tissue and it behaves exactly like a normal cornea. So you, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't be able to make out that this is actually bioengineered and it is not uh, a true uh, cornea. It is, of course, made in India and we are trying to make it very affordable, more affordable than you would have to pay for corneal tissue for all corneal transplants out there, transplant surgeons out there. And it is also customizable, uh, which basically means that you can make it in any shape and size or any uh, uh, refractive power so that it can be used for refractive surgery as well. So this is something that we are very excited about and I think lots to look forward to in the near future. We are very close to translation in these areas. Like I said, the stem cells are already in clinical trials, the hydrogels are next. And I think that in the next three to four years, we will have the bioengineered corneas in clinical trials as well. Uh, we are currently very happy with the safety and efficacy profile of these. And I think that it, there may be an opportunity where you use these components individually. There may be an opportunity where you use them in combination. And in the long term, we are looking at using the mesenchymal cells for cell therapy for as an anti-inflammatory for any kind of inflammation on the ocular surface, like I showed you for treatment of corneal scars, but for any inflammation, be it scleritis or uveitis or even graft rejection. Uh, of course, dry eye is also one potential application. The hydrogel, like I said, for corneal wounds, so you can have the hydrogel with you in your fridge and you have a patient who turns up with a non-healing corneal ulcer or with a corneal perforation, you can just immediately apply it as a patch on the eye and the patient cornea will heal without requiring any surgical intervention. That is what we feel uh, will happen. And the customized 3D printed lenticules which can be used as an alternative to corneal tissue maybe for performing DALK or FALK or also as refractive lenticules uh, for refractive surgery, vision correction and I think that there is also potential and we were also working on this with the same material to make biological contact lenses that people that can be drug laden and people can use for a certain period of time and also in the future, uh, something more permanent like intraocular implants. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sayan. Uh, wonderful uh, work. We definitely are proud. No, you are working on these areas. The future is there to synthesize things. And nothing better than 3D printed corneas for available for all of us. Great work. Uh, any questions from the panel? In the meantime, Dr. Namrata will put up her presentation. I can, while... The, yeah, Vishal. Yeah, sign excellent talk, yeah. as expected. Uh, so, uh, the clarity was amazing uh, for the neocornea. Uh, how do you get that? How do you achieve that? Is it just a material or is there something else? Yeah. So uh, what we are trying to, yes, the neocornea and the bioengineered cornea that we have now, we are very, very happy with the, with the consistency, uh, the mechanical strength and the optical transparency. Actually, among all of these things, uh, all of these properties, optical transparency is the easiest to get. It's the mechanical strength which is the hardest. So when you try to optimize this, balance this, if you're trying to get optically clear tissue, usually it's very brittle. Uh, if you try to get tough tissue, it's usually very difficult to make it transparent at the same time. Yeah. So, um, 
I won't, I can't tell you what it exactly is or how we make it, but uh, we are very happy with the with what we have right now, and uh, we were we worked with a number of tissues that we were using to and you know perm different permutation combinations to achieve that, um, and uh, we just hit upon this about a month ago, and we are very very excited about it. Yes, what the final product that I showed you with the suture. Yeah, and I agree with you. The transparency comes. There is a balance between tra achieving transparency and the mechanical strength. If you want to increase the mechanical strength, you might lose some of the transparency. Thanks so much. Excellent work. Thank you so much.